That's what's wrong with democratic socialism. That's what's wrong with Black Lives Matter, with Antifa, and with the Me Too movement. It's, it's based on so wanting a specific person or group to be wrong that we will do anything. We can almost taste it. My clubs for closers. So this is what I want to talk with you about uh, today. You know, a lot of times people are looking for something. I'm a 31-year-old 30, guy who gives a crap what I have to say as far as life advice, but it matters to some of you. So this is something that actually uh, was on my heart this week because I was watching my favorite movie ever. So all this Me Too, the Black Lives Matter, the democratic socialism, it all spawns from the same evil. It, it all comes from this idea of shifting the balance of power simply for the sake of shifting the balance of power. It's the foundational philosophy of the left. We all know it. We've talked about it. The sort of underdog theory. It's known by another word. Envy. So one of my favorite films is, is The Edge. Uh, is, have you seen... No? I have not. Oh. I have not. I want to, though. I watched the trailer. You keep talking about Silence. it. I want to watch it. It is. As a matter of fact, you know, let me say it, the reason why is because it is my favorite film. It is, it is not maybe. It is my favorite film, period. I'll say that. People give me crap about that all the time. But go go and watch the film. Comment here. Let me know what you think. Whenever I talk with someone about this film, I'm like, oh, that's your favorite. Shouldn't it be Godfather? Shouldn't it be? I think Chinatown was a better film, by the way. Uh, who cares about the Quaaludes and the 14-year-old? It was a good film. But The Edge is my favorite film. Everyone comes back and says... Yeah, it was pretty good. No one comes back and says, no, nah, I thought it sucked. So this is one of those ideas where you're conditioned to not like films. I get it. There are a couple couple of lines in the film that might be cheesy. There are a couple of green screen sequences that maybe don't hold up today. Um, but I think it's at least the most underrated film of the last quarter century. And I just found out that the, the writer, David Mamet, is going to be on the show. The same writer of Glengarry Glenn Ross, who he oh. wrote The Edge, The Untouchables. Uh, is it... Oh, I don't know. He, he wrote a he, most prolific stage writer of our generation. He's written a lot of great films. He's going to be on the show. I cannot tell you how excited I am. He actually uh, came out of the closet as a conservative with an article titled, I believe it was, I don't have it in front of me, Why I'm No Longer a Brain Dead Liberal. New York Times, I believe, is where he wrote it. That's funny. I could be wrong. Someone like, who's New York Magazine? But I, I don't know exactly where it was, so someone can maybe let me know. I don't have a source for this. I didn't prep for this, but... It's like I just was, my mouth was getting dry, so I had to drink, and that's awkward for people who are listening on audio. By the way, subscribe on iTunes uh, if you aren't for when you're on the road. Um, here's the thing. He wrote The Edge long before the article where he came out as a conservative. And this is a big reason I love the film. But there are tons of reasons to love the film, especially when you rewatch it. It's one of those, it's like a video game where you backtrack and there are Easter eggs. Nearly every single shot, almost every line of dialogue means something. But something that is singularly unique about this film, The Billionaire played by Anthony Hopkins. The character's name is Charles Morse. Kind of a spoiler alert here. Three, two, good. The billionaire is actually the good guy. And this relates back to the point I'll be making. In the realm of cinema, where the wealthy person is nearly always the big evil oil baron or the corrupt Wall Street banker, here's this film where Charles Morse, the billionaire, surrounded by artists, photographers, and, and even minorities, by the way, one of whom just gets the crap of him mauled out of a bear. Way worse than the Revenant scene. Hey. Uh, the standout man of character, the true blue character, is the old white guy. Patriarchy personified. Charles Moore throughout the film, he not only improves people's lives, but he saves them. And the point is that sometimes shifting the balance of power merely for the sake of it doesn't take into account who's going to get the power once the shift is completed. Sure, some of the worst people throughout history were powerful. So were all of the best. And if we try to strip power from people simply because we perceive them to hold it, as we're talking about now in this, these articles, you, you see them with, with Me Too, that's the end game with democratic socialism. So if, if we want to strip power just, just because people have it, that's the, re that's the reason, well, who's going to maintain the balance of power afterward? Hillary Clinton? The Me Too charlatans? The LGBTQ AAIP movement? Feminists? Well, just because they aren't Charles Morse? Something else on the edge that... that, that uh, really stands out to me, is everyone in the film wants something from this billionaire. At every turn, he doesn't know who to trust. He doesn't know their motives. It's incredibly isolating. I really highly recommend this film. And there are a lot of undertones here that I could get into. I will, hopefully, I will with David Mamet when he's on the show. But it's really easy to vilify people of power or perceived wealth. You know why it's easy? Because it's a lot harder to look ourselves in the mirror for the selfish pieces of garbage that we all are when we want something from those people. Well, I don't know. It could be cheaper deodorant while we all vilify Walmart. It could be cheaper gas while we vilify oil companies. Or safer streets while we vilify cops. Y you know, I I've known a few wealthy people in my life. I've been fortunate enough to know a few wealthy people. Uh, no, I am, not, I am not amongst them. But I've seen him happy with them. 
happy. I've seen it happen with them. Uh, people like, um, I don't want to, you know, okay, Mark, Carrie, Kevin, uh, all people I've seen with folks tugging at their sleeve, demanding something of them. And you know what happens when these people don't get what they want? Who's a d rich jerk? And that's how the shift of power just for the sake of it begins. It sprouts from the seed of selfishness. I know people say, oh, where are you going with this? Because all of us do this. The difference is it's a foundational principle of the teaching of the modern left. To use an example, Kevin, this is a real person, uh, an incredibly wealthy, I'd, I'd like to, I feel fortunate to say friend of mine. I'm always uncomfortable asking him for anything, even though he's offered a lot. You know this guy. Um, to give you an idea, okay, let me, give, let me give you some examples here. I'm, try, I'm, I'm trying to make sure they don't reveal identity, but I, I don't really think they care. Let me, let me give you two examples. There are two videos completed here at Louder with Crowder. This team never would have been able to do, if not for this man, Kevin, lending us his personal plane. I know it sounds like people, oh, white, white people problems. Listen, yeah, the guy has a plane. Good for him. But you know why he lent it to us? Just to be a blessing. To, just to be a blessing, not, not only to us, but to you, the fans. One of them was a Crowder conference. One of them was the whole YAF conference and why, because we, there was no way to get out there commercially and there were, there were over 800 fans in that, in that uh, not mess, a ballroom. I wouldn't have been able to see. He knew that we needed to get six crew members out to a location we couldn't afford to do it in time otherwise. We wouldn't have been able to. It was an unbelievable blessing that he, here, and if you don't ask for it, with a lot of these people, you'll be surprised as to how generous they are. It applies to every moment of your life, really. This is how we tie it back to you. Think of anyone you've ever been, really been mad with. Uh, your dad, your teacher, maybe your boss, your mom. All people who at those moments in time were in a position of authority over you. It comes down to submitting to authority, sometimes when appropriate. The left wants you to submit to authority when it's the right people, based on identity politics, not based on morality. Whereas, yep, as a Christian, I do believe there's a biblical basis for submitting to authority when appropriate. So all these people, almost all the people you've probably disliked at some moment in your life had authority over you. Now think of anyone on the flip side who's ever actually really helped you and been there when you needed it. Someone who actually meant it. We hear, so, oh, I got your back, bro. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? Someone who truly meant it when they said they had your back. Could it have been maybe your dad? Maybe that teacher? Maybe that boss? Maybe your mom? Now magnify that. That's just a wealthy person. That's just a big name actor. That's just a person in some kind of position of authority who for some reason you or I or society doesn't like. And because of that, we automatically assume them to be in the wrong. Why? Because we so want them to be in the wrong. That's what's, that's what's wrong with democratic socialism. That's what's wrong with Black Lives Matter, with Antifa, and with the Me Too movement. It's, it's based on so wanting a specific person or group to be wrong that we will do anything. We can almost taste it. And that's the foundation of the left today. The point here is, is really, there's nothing easier than to vilify people in positions of power or authority or success that we haven't achieved. Because we haven't achieved it. It's easier to just hate the people who have. Some of them are bad people, of course, but it's even harder to look yourself in the mirror and be honest as to why you hate that person. Is it them? Is it the idea of them? Or is it you? So think of this in your life, if you're listening right now. Is there someone under whose authority, maybe you've been, maybe you've been difficult. Maybe you've been giving them a hard time. Maybe you've been vilifying them. Maybe you're envious of them and you don't treat them so well. Really, I, right now, I'm going to give you a second. I want you to think of one person. This is an exercise. Pick one person in your life. Do you think that person deserves how you treat them? Do you think that person maybe has his or her own crap to deal with? Do you think maybe that person could use someone to really trust? Maybe it's a person with a plane. Point is, it doesn't matter. You've been thinking of you. And we all do this. Make it right. Go today, right now. Make it right. Or, or at, least, at least make it right moving forward starting today. Because the truth is, there are just as many powerless ass as there are powerful heroes, and vice versa. It's human nature. I'm not trying to shift the balance of power just for the sake of it. I don't want to restructure society based on envy. All I want to see are more good guys and girls at the top. So you know what? The left wants you to be that guy. Don't be that guy. Hey, if you like this video, subscribe or click the notification bell 
right next to the subscription button because subscribing doesn't mean anything anymore now according to the YouTube gods. And uh, if you like the late night show, you can watch it every single day, a full hour at loudwithcreditor.com slash mug club. Subscribe there. That way we aren't beholden to the evil YouTube overlords and we don't have to start playing video games with mouth sound effects or children react.